Hey everybody, welcome to another day with North and South. Today's video is brought to you by IXL, but more about that later. Today, we wanted to sit down and do a talk about, as a follow-up video to our unschooling video. What was that actually called? Unschooling how, something, how something, to. something. I don't even think it was uh, how, I don't think it was how to yeah. or something. We made that a couple of years ago and we've had a lot of interest and a lot of questions about it and wanted to do a follow-up with maybe some more actionable items and more like concrete, like, okay, I like the theories, I like the ideas behind it, but how do I get started? So today's video will be how to get started with unschooling. So first, we thought it would be appropriate to introduce who we are. Um, I'm Megan. And I'm Mike. <laughs> and we're the Norps, and we have nine unschooled kids, ranging in age from nine, 13, 13, 14, 16 almost. Okay, almost right. Um, 17, 19, 20, 21. Do we miss anybody? I don't think so. All right. And so we have a lot of ages and we also used to have younger. That's usually how it works. <laughs> um, At one point they were younger. So let's give the kind of explain the makeup of our family. The reason we have some doubles there as far as age goes are really close is that we have four biological children and five adopted. Pretty Real tight, tight range. Yeah. And uh, makes for a big, fun, happy family. Yeah, definitely. And so on our channel, we're showing all of the time our life and our lifestyle, but we thought it would be appropriate to kind of break down a little bit more specifically what we do to unschool and uh, maybe show some things that we haven't ever shown before. So if you're curious about kind of what unschooling is in general, go back and watch that first video if you haven't seen it yet. That gives more detail, I think. It's like really in depth. Yeah, it's it's almost an hour long, I think. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how long this one's going to be, but it's it's pretty in depth. So we didn't start as unschoolers. I started homeschooling when my oldest was going into second grade, uh, and I just really wanted to homeschool. It felt unnatural for me to send him to school, but also neither one of us had been homeschooled. We started with kind of like a public school program called K-12 that you could get for free and get all of the curriculum and just do it at home. And that was a really good transition for us because it made me feel less afraid. Like I wasn't gonna ruin my kids and- um, And it, but, made, it made dad less afraid too. Yes, I was definitely. I was pretty nervous about it. Our extended family was pretty nervous about it. Yeah. It would, Because this was a new concept for yeah. the whole, like everybody. So it was kind of a soft start. Um, and there just weren't as many resources then as there are now, but Probably within a few years, I've, I read a lot of different books on lots of different types of um, homeschooling theories and styles. Right. Took lots of like little like what type of unschool or homeschooler are you? Talked to a lot of homeschoolers, went to a lot of homeschool co-ops and met a lot of other moms and finally transitioned to unschooling. Now for us, we use the word unschooling. It's kind of a blanket term and it does definitely is used by a lot of different people in a lot of different ways. So today for our purposes, we're gonna say that's child led right. without any specific benchmarks, you know, or like levels sort of Grades, thing. all that kind of stuff. We're not super concerned about. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we mean by unschooling. And so by the time it wasn't actually until Elijah, our oldest, was in middle school that we made mm. the official transition. I think what we were doing before that was unschooling. like <laughs> Light. Yeah, light. <laughs> That's the way to put it. It was unschooling by default because there was a lot of frustration oftentimes with homeschooling. And we had a lot of curriculums and spent just a yeah. lot of our time. Uh, we lived on a small farm at that point. A lot of our time outside and reading books and interacting with nature and a little bit of our time, you know, Actually, doing being down, what looks like, yeah, like public school at, at home. the desk or yeah. at the table. I did have a homeschool room though, where I had a huge chalkboard and posters and you know all of the things that make it look like a school room with a globe <laughs> and all of that. And we we were barely ever in it, barely. It looked it, cute. Though. Yeah, it did look good. It was yeah. <laughs> good for Instagram, you know. Yeah. Over the years of doing this, we've kind of like seen some of the things that made us feel uncomfortable and some of the things that made it more effective, and we thought it would be helpful to share that with as concisely as possible with you guys today. So we're gonna share three different things that we think are really important to be effective and what you can do now to get started this school year, whether you're at the beginning of the school year or middle of the school year with unschooling. Um, these are not in order. They're kind of things you'll be doing simultaneously. Mm. And so I don't want you to get too hung up on that, that like, well, we can't do that till we've done this. but. Mm. The first thing that we would recommend is having what we would call like a family council. Right, um, or like a planning meeting. A planning meeting, and so. And I think this, I don't know if we're gonna get to it, but I think this can be done 
either with all your your children who are going to be involved in this at once or individually depending on the situation yeah that we in the past have done it individually and uh, you know mom and dad and it could be just one parent but want mom and dad meeting with each child um, and talking to them about these topics but we found that as we do it as a group they almost like inspire each other um, and they see what others are doing and they say, oh, I, I think I would like to learn that too. And so what you're doing at this meeting and you're gonna give them a heads up beforehand so that they come with ideas, but you say, we're gonna talk about what everybody'd like to learn this year or if you have any goals and see how we can support you in that. And so we are we go around the table and say, okay, what are you interested in learning this year? And it's not like a, I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna make sure that you <laughs> do this and then I'm gonna hound you about it. It's really more so that as their parents, we know how we can support them. And yeah. because sometimes they don't even know their kids, they don't know um, what tools and resources are out there mm. and they don't know what they should be asking for help from us for. Right. And so we might sit down at the table and say, okay, you know what our kid says? Well, I would like to learn piano how to play the mm. piano this year. We'll say, oh, okay, so what do you want to do? do would you like it to be, you know, where we get right. an app, where yeah. you put on the iPad and you put that on, a, would you like a teacher that you, where you go to a place? Well, how would you like to learn that? And then we talk that through. And so that's a very simple example. One of the things we've adopted more recently is we give them categories. So it's easier for them to think. So they right. aren't just like, uh, and so the four <laughs> categories- framework. Yeah, it's a framework. The four categories we use in our family we like adopted from a church program. I'm, I mean, they're pretty, it's they pretty general. cover all your bases, but we have the four categories, physical, intellectual, social, and spiritual. And what are, what are some things you would like to work on or get better at this year within those four categories? And we're not, and, well, yeah, this is something that, <clears throat> that you can obviously customize yourself. If you don't like those four categories, just come up with what has meaning for you and your family and, and go from there. Yeah, and then we're not also like, well, you know, you have two in this category and only one in this category. It's just really, truly and honestly, something to help them think. So, cause right. sometimes when you're thinking about goals, even, you know, even as an adult, it's like, I don't know, you don't know where to start or like, what do I want to learn? And so this gives them a framework and, um, and, and it helps them kind of a little exercise for their mind to come up with ideas. So once we do that, like we said, we go through each child and we do start at the oldest because they have more practice. And it, mm. so as they get older, unschooling gets more and more interesting. When they're younger, a lot of the times it looks like, you know, d drawing video, drawing videos that they watch and, you know, draw little ice cream cones with smiles on them and making things with cardboard <laughs> and digging in the backyard or whatever. They can watch there and get some ideas. And that could be like as, like as broad as I would like to learn math more math, or I would like to learn my times tables. And so at that point, we'll pull out our computers, we'll look at different you know, resources, um, and there's so many resources online, and, and see if there's something that can support them, whether it's a book, or a course, or a museum that we can visit, um, or a club they can join, really anything's open, and we talk about um, different ways that we can meet their needs. And that brings us to today's sponsor. It's called IXL. And it's an online curriculum from K through 12. And what we like in particular about this, as homeschoolers and unschoolers, we have interacted with so many online curriculums. But what we really like about, about IXL is um, that it's not just by grade level, but it it's completely broken down by topic within that grade level. Right. And so if my child comes to me and says, I would like to learn my times tables, um, I don't have to wonder what grade do people learn times tables and do they, you know, a lot of yeah. online curriculums will make you go through each section to, before to you can get, get to, to the it. next one. We can go right into that grade and to that curriculum and just spend the time right there on the times tables and multiplication and, and, and along those lines. We can just be all using it of different ages and pulling different things and letting it serve our family as unschoolers, mm -hmm. which sometimes people are surprised that we use curriculum, but we're child led, we're not anti-curriculum. And I will say, you can, al you can also set up individual children on there so that they can go in and kind of choose their, they get your list of names there, they can choose their name and then they can pick up wherever they left off yeah. when they, with any given lesson. And you can log in as a parent and see how they're doing, see if they're struggling somewhere 
and, and help them out. So if you'd like to give IXL a try for yourself, just click on the link in the description below to get 20% off your first month. Yeah, and while we want everything to be child-led, we're also parents and we know of the anxiety that comes when you're homeschooling. And especially <laughs> if you were public schooled and you're just like trying to wrap your head around um, how this works and your kids are as well. If they were public schooled before, they're not really sure and they get lost sometimes. Mm. And so during those times in our family, certain kids, what we can just tell, they're really struggling to figure out how to let their interests lead and guide them. And so a program like IXL is awesome. And we've definitely used those sorts of resources before to help them kind of get out of their funk and get something done every day so they feel proud of themselves. And so that they are also um, introduced to ideas and then they can go, actually, I'm really interested in this thing I just learned about today. And that's where that child-led interest, you know, deep dive can start. Which leads us to our next tip, if you wanna get started with unschooling, and that is to fill your home with resources, right. to fill your life with experiences and activities. Um, it is really, really hard to figure out who you are and what you're interested in if you live in a very sterile environment and you don't experience much. <laughs> it just doesn't occur to you until you don't know what food you like unless you're trying lots of different foods and you don't know what excites you if you aren't trying lots of different experiences or having lots of different experiences. So if you are feeling like your kids are uninspired, take them out, visit museums and historical sites and just nature, spend time in nature at waterfalls or in the forest or in the desert or wherever it is that you live and to look around you and notice the bugs and the animals and the air and the seasons and all of those things and make your life full of richness and your home full of richness. And I think you'll start to see kids picking up books, um, listening to music, watching documentaries or YouTube videos on subjects, and especially ones where people are really excited about the things that they you know, are experts on and, and your kids will start to be drawn towards things and right. have interests that are leading them. If you're thinking, well, that would be a dream, but I don't have the money for that. The best resource I think you can find, I mean, there usually are local things that are actually pretty cheap, but is the thrift store. And so I think pretty soon I will do a thrift store haul for homeschoolers. Ooh. That but, sounds pretty cool. Um, you're there all, I'd say 99% of my books, especially our kids and homeschooling books come from the thrift store. And I mean, anytime I'm seeing books like this or this, I have five Chinese kids, so they're excited about that. And picking really interesting books like that just have... Are we going to read it? It still has its $3 price tag in it, by the way. <laughs> But just really cool stuff where you know already that your kids are pretty jazzed about that topic. And so you're looking through the kids' books and you're getting them. That one was a little bit more expensive at $3. But usually, you know, they're $0.50 cents to $1.50 in the kids' section. And you are filling your home with books, um, which are just full of ideas. And so, like I said earlier, if you have a child who's particularly interested in dinosaurs or horses, you're definitely going to go to the thrift store and find a lot of books on dinosaurs and horses, and it's an easy way to add that richness into your home. Um, and we all, we, libraries are great too, but for us, and this may be true for a lot of people with little kids, <laughs> library books come home and then they get lost. <laughs> and then they stay home and then they, forever. Like they never make it back because <laughs> yeah. either we forget or they forget or it gets ruined. So we found- Over the <clears> years, <throat> we've big, big donators. <laughs> The, the philanthropy work we've done to the local library right, system. It's true, through the fine system. <laughs> we should have a, a wing named after us yeah. after all we spent. So <laughs> we, we've we opted for buying the books so yeah. that we can just have them. They're always there. And uh, we don't have to worry about if they get damaged or something like that. Yeah, so. and also because I don't know if... I, we have a lot of kids and that they might... The next child might come along and be interested in the same thing. And I also think for myself... My interests and when I'm trying to acquire knowledge, it comes in spurts. And so you'll be really interested in something for a little bit and then you'll lay it down. Hmm. And then because I own the book, they can come back to it later and see it from a different angle in a different perspective. And I, I really like owning that. But I also think, and we've talked about this in a recent podcast, that you, your, story, your home tells a story to your children. And I think to be a really effective unschooler, you want to have books. Check them out. And 
records or movies or things like that reflecting back to your kids what you value and what's available to them and so i think that the the thrift store is a great resource for that and also a quick that's a quick plug for our podcast if you want to check out our podcast it's called no place like home we actually post the video version of it typically here to this youtube channel but also just look it up anywhere you get your podcast no we place talk like a lot home. about homeschooling on we there. talk about homeschooling and go in a little more depth but yeah. that's a good option for you uh, while we're on this sort of topic of, of kind of helping your kids start and then move along, uh, one thing with unschooling, we're not super concerned that a child finish any given curriculum. What we've seen and what we trust is that children, they, they naturally are interested in, in topics and that sort of thing. Sometimes you have to guide them there or help them out. But if they, if they start to lose interest or, they, or their interest shifts, we don't really fight that. We're not, okay. we're not against that. This isn't Again, this is not public school at home. This is something different. And we want the child's uh, learning to be led by their interest. And so we're okay if they shift or pivot or go to a completely different topic or subject um, because we we think that's part of the learning process and they're going to learn most when they're interested. Yeah. So It's like proven through lots of research that when you're interested, you retain the information so much better than when right. you're just memorizing things or doing it because it was, it was required of you. I think... All of us remember cramming for a test and then completely forgetting everything <laughs> yeah. a couple of days later. Right. Um, but when you're truly and genuinely interested and passionate about something, that it's like your brain opens up and the information just pours in and sticks, stays. Right. So, so yeah, your expectation with unschooling has to be different than what you might have experienced at, at home or, or excuse me, at school or even with kind of typical homeschooling yeah. where um, you don't, you're not worried so much about checking off boxes. We're more concerned, is my child doing something? Are they learning something that they're interested in? Yeah. Um, and and letting that sort of unfold yeah. instead, of, instead of forcing it. Because as soon as we're forcing our child to learn something, then that, like Megan said, the retention and the interest goes way down and you're really fighting an uphill battle. Yeah, and so, so we just have one big box that we want to check every day is that we see them learning. Right. And a or, lot of the, or do, I guess doing is learning. Yeah. But engaging it, because learning can, I, really, you, talk, you said it earlier, it can look like taking cardboard and cutting it up to make it into a little house that they've glued together. That's great. Yeah. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Um, and a so, lot of times moms will say, well, how do we make sure that our field trips are educational? It's like, you don't have to. <laughs> Education is happening all the time. They're, Anytime they're you're at learning. a museum, it's educational. Anytime you're out, it's educational. I mean, even if you're at the grocery store, it's educational. Your child is learning about how the world works and the marketplace works and all of those sorts of things. So yeah. I think we just have one requirement because there are times when our kids are stuck in maybe spending time on screens and we just feel like they're getting a little bit lost. We have the requirement that they can only watch educational screens. Mm -hmm. That's not super rigid, like that's not educational, except sometimes it's not. <laughs> Meaning video games and just like entertainment movies. Yeah, the kids, I think the kids know what's considered educational. Well, they days. definitely know what's considered educational when somebody else is on that screen. <laughs> like, they'll call them I out. don't think that's educational, but um, we just want to make sure that they're learning and growing and interested and like, like I said earlier, as they get older, that gets clearer and clearer. Maybe it's, we should, should we give an example of that? Sure. As some of our older kids? Sure. I think some people wonder, so what does that look like as they age? And where does this, where does this take a child? Because I think when, when, a, when a child is younger, they're going to be kind of dabbling and learning about lots of different things. But as they get older, we are completely okay if our kids get real specific and very deep into a subject or an activity. One of the examples that we, we oftentimes talk about is our son, Andrew, who's always been interested in storytelling. And really for him, it's been since he was like very 11, young. He wanted to be a writer. A very active imagination, always coming up with stories, always acting out stories. That yes, were in his he head. was, even very young age. Right, he was running around the house in his own little world with his little uh, fantasy stories. And now uh, he is <laughs> 17, right, 17. And he is in his eighth or ninth chapter of a book he's writing. And this is not his first book. This is, mm -mm. We, he's, this is his best he's book so, so many. Far, but he spends a lot of time every day writing. And we are completely okay with that. Because A, he is, he is, he is really honing this craft. And has just learned so much along that process. And naturally, kind of as part of it, has been interested in other topics that go along, either go along with it or just Andrew has an interest in something and, and learns about it. And then we have um, Elijah, who's when he was, oh, probably 12 or 13. Yeah. Picked up one of my books on, oh, there they are right now. A couple of our kids just got home 
So you so, might hear some bumps yeah. in the house. But when Elijah was like 12 or 13, I had a book on like making things from bamboo. Uh -huh. And he picked that book up and got obsessed with it. And then ordered some bamboo, planted some bamboo, tried to grow a bamboo forest. That didn't really work out. That but part. it led him to interest in Japan. And then he started learning Japanese. And then he went and applied did everything that on his own at age 15. Uh -huh. And went and did a study abroad in Japan one summer. And then went and served as a missionary in Japan for over a year. And now speaks fluent Japanese and plans on going and studying um, at a university in Japan next year. And so, you know, you just don't know where it's going to lead them or where it's going to take them. Who knew that when he picked up this, like, I don't know, building with bamboo, that it would lead him. <laughs> and, and he'd read a lot of things along the way. He also not only ordered bamboo plants, but remember he ordered a plant that was supposedly going to glow in the dark. Yeah. That kind of fell apart, but <laughs> we have another child. Um, but, you know, you just don't know where it's going to lead them. Our daughter Esther, who is 19 and about to leave to go serve as a missionary, she um, was obsessed with doing hair. And so, from when, almost the day we we picked her we up in adopted China. her in China, like yeah, it was, she, she like started it. doing my hair, and so we just kept supporting her in that and buying her little mannequin heads with hair. And till then, she went to Aveda here in Charlotte and got a scholarship for that as well. Mm, she really, that's true. I mean, her professors or her teachers there talked about how special she was and spectacular that she really had a gift for this and we're super excited to see what she does with that after she gets home from serving as a missionary and then pearl we'll just give this example pearl's right now upstairs packaging up and shipping off earrings that she's made and sold Actually, online i'm wearing some of her earrings. oh these are some of pearls mm -hmm. pearl is amazing with her hands she does beautiful work and be again we let her and we're happy for her to take the time on a very regular basis working on that craft and, and pursuing that craft. Well, and now that um, we're talking about it, we'll finish off with Daniel, who's 20. Mm. I don't want to leave any of our older kids out. <laughs> um, Daniel, when we picked him up at China, we in China, we adopted him at age 14. Within minutes, you recognize Daniel's love for... Uh, food. Food. He loves food. He's and a food guy. He was obsessed with food while we are in China. I mean, at the different restaurants we were eating and trying new things. And cooking when we came home and he had a bread making business for a time that was successful selling bread to people in our neighborhood. Um, and now he plans on going to culinary school next year. Um, He's saving his money for that. He really, everybody has become their own thing. And I think you might think that, that in order for them to be well-rounded, they have to study every subject. But I think along the way in studying any subject, they pick up other subjects, but they become interesting people. Um, our goal with our kids and with unschooling is that they are an inch wide and a mile deep because I, we think that's really what makes you find a lot of joy and makes you an interesting person and also makes you a successful person. Right. Um, that you really understand something really deeply and that you're really passionate about. So I don't know, like with Pearl, she's really good at her earrings. I don't know that she'll make earrings for the rest of her life, but I do know that her small entrepreneurial efforts with her jewelry business mm. will serve her for the rest of her for life. Sure. And she's learning all sorts of things. There's it's lot, pretty yeah, there's, cool. There's lots of things they learn along the way. And we but can also, keep going with each child and they're all different. And we love, nothing is more gratifying than kind of going along with them and learn. I've learned so much about writing from mm, Andrew as he's true. been on that journey. And because he has, he has studied that very deeply yeah and so it's been really gratifying to watch all of them and have them come back to us and report back on the things they've learned we know so much about japan and cooking and <laughs> hair um because of our kids interests so but also i think we and this is more of a theory of, of unschooling in general but allowing your child to to be super interested in something and not um not writing the end of that story for them and saying oh i guess you're going to be a jewelry maker someday and and if they if that changes for some reason then you being say, disappointed get back to it yeah. yeah like acting like they have to do this thing but allowing them to sort of learn along the way because andrew at once upon a time thought he'd be a mathematician right he was mm -hmm. he got really interested in math for a while mm -hmm. which was great no i mean who's gonna argue with a kid being interested in math but we didn't say oh that's what he is now i guess that's what he's gonna do uh, we just allowed him to shift as he went. Mm -hmm. So that's part of this process is not kind of putting your child in, the, in, in one of those categories and saying, okay, this is your field of study now. So we're going to stick with that, right? 
uh, they're, they're allowed to change yeah. and it's okay because it's all part of learning and that's really what we're concerned with. Are you learning? Do you know how to learn? And that's the only box we try to check each day is are they learning? And then finally, the maybe most important part of getting started with the unschooling is modeling that behavior for your kids. A lot of the times I've been on, you know, these kind of Zoom calls with mothers who are new in homeschooling asking, how do I get my kid to play an instrument or to learn a language? I try to, you know, get my kids to be motivated, but they aren't doing anything. And I think probably it's not necessarily a super comfortable question, but I think the most important question is, or do you play an instrument? Or do you speak another language or spend any time studying that? Um, are you modeling? the love and joy I found in learning. Mm. Are you reading? You're like, oh, how do I get them to spend more time reading? They hate reading. Do you model the love of reading for them? Are you reading? Because children are constantly, the biggest education that they all have, you know, before the age of 20, is learning how to be an adult from you right. and from the other adults in their life. And so if they never see you reading, but they see you on your phone all of the time, um, you know, a little We're guilty, guilty here. <laughs> then you can't put be too upset with them that they're not progressing to become an adult who's reading all of the time. Um, and the same with an instrument. I think you will be surprised as you model how much the mood in your home shifts when you're excited about something, you're watching mm -hmm. documentaries on something, you're using these sorts of resources that you want your kids to use for yourself and you're modeling that behavior for them. Right, and I don't think that means that you have to be doing everything that you want your child to do, but it means that are you, are you doing something that's exploring a topic or an activity. Maybe you're trying to build a business. Are you checking that box for yourself as right. well? Right, so as long as, as long as you as a parent are learning and growing, then you're modeling that in general to your child. Yeah. And, and they are more interested in following yeah. that example. And then I think, so like if you go to a museum with your kids, you're walking through and you're reading the, the information on it and being like, wow, that's really cool. I hadn't, you know, and you're not forcing them like, isn't that cool? And I want you to go home and write an <laughs> essay on how cool that is. But you have a genuine interest and you're following it. And then I think to be the extra dose of amazingness with modeling is that you let them come along for it. And so maybe if you are building a business, you do it at the kitchen table instead of in your office or in your bedroom, like mm. when you're on the computer or when you're cooking, you let them cook with you. Uh, or when you're going somewhere to maybe if you're doing some home project, you let them come with you and watch you scribble out the numbers and try to measure things and figure things out. Yeah, that's true. Um, you let them experience and come along. You know, in these traditional cultures around the world, children don't go to school. Um, if you think about like children living in the Amazon or something, they don't go to school. The, they follow along with their parents as they're hunting and growing and cooking and building and doing, and that is their education. Right. And so, you know, we... We think that would be a, maybe a more effective description of what unschooling should look like, is that they are their whole life is wrapped up in modeled behavior from their parents, mm -hmm. and they learn along the way, like they're coming along with you. So just keep that in mind. It's probably the most important thing you can do to get started with unschooling, mm -hmm. is start educating yourself again if you've stopped or maybe for the first time if, because public school sometimes turns all of us off to the idea of reading books or, you know, history, like, oh, I don't like history. It's like, history is actually pretty interesting if, if you maybe look at it differently than you were forced to look at it when you were back in school. So that program with IXL is totally open to you too. And you can dive in with that, with those programs as well as so many other things, so many other resources on the internet and in your local library. So along with the modeling, uh, there is going to be uh, a little bit of a, a mess that goes along with all this stuff. He would notice that. So, so, so <laughs> like me, I'm a little bit, I, I'm not, I don't consider myself a real clean freak, but I am a little bit. And, but when your kids are learning, when they're engaged in some of these activities, they're going to make a mess. There's going to be stuff around. There's going to be stuff out, which is really what you want to have. This isn't like when you send them off to school, the house gets clean and stays clean all day till they get home. Uh, they're there all day. So what, what we do to kind of counteract that is we do have a chore chart. Our kids are responsible to, to clean up after themselves. And Especially to, in the evenings. Yeah. Right. So you, there's ways to, and that's another learning experience, you know, is, is having them have responsibility. But be okay with the mess, but you can certainly have a system to kind of clean up at the end of the day and, and, and make that a little more organized. But it's, it's going to be messy. Well, there's and I think no reframing it. it, but when it is a mess and there's books here and there's a project here, a bunch of cardboard or there's somebody cooking it, 
that you reframe it as lot, not that it's such a mess or like, wow, we're really doing a lot of stuff mm, today. Or, mm-hmm. you know, we have this rich home life that is full of interest and experiences. That's true. Because if nothing ever gets out because everyone's sitting on a screen, that that's not quite as inspiring. Now, there are times where the kids are watching stuff on screens. This is this is certainly true of the process. So it's okay if they're learning that way. But we hope that every once in a while there's a mess made too. Yeah, that reminds me of a story I heard once where... Um, this family had just put in grass in their backyard and their sons were out there running around on it and tearing it up. And the wife said to the husband, like, oh my gosh, the kids are going to kill the grass. They're being so rough on it. Tearing up the grass. They're tearing up the grass. And he said, sweetheart, we're not raising grass. We're raising boys. And I think that's the thing to keep in mind. Your goal is not a clean home. It's a rich home. It's a home that raises people who are interesting and happy and lead fulfilling lives. And so... Clean is nice and it is important to a certain degree, but it isn't your goal ultimately. And just to keep that in mind. All right, so go ahead and start thinking about ways that you can enrich your home life. You can fill it with interesting things and giving your kids experiences, having these meetings where you're really directly asking them what they'd like to learn about and how you can support them in that. And maybe that will help you as you're going to the thrift store. Oh, I know they want to learn about this. So these are the books I'm going to look Mm, for. Um, and so you don't buy a bunch of books that nobody ever wants to look at. Um, and then also that you get excited that maybe there's some books at the thrift store or at the library or museums that will excite you and really model the love of knowledge and education for your kids. So if you want to also, don't forget, if you wanted to get started with IXL, if that seems like a program that will support you and really help you out, especially if you're new, then go ahead and follow the link in the description of this video. Um, It's a really great resource and we highly recommend it. And also come back, we'll do, like we said, we will have more homeschooling videos. You can check out the other videos on our channel that are about unschooling Mm. or our podcast, No Place Like Home, or come back so I can show you how to use the thrift store as a great homeschooling resource. All right. See you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye.